to be on the red carpet. Today I have someone who you might not know who he is, but you'll know what he has done in his life. And um, his name is Mark Brown. He is the father of all these little critters behind us. Arthur has been part of our history, our pop culture, our whole culture for 46 years. It's hard to imagine. So if you don't know Arthur, you, odds are your kids will and definitely your grandkids. So let me welcome Mark Brown. Welcome. Thank you, Francine. It's good to be here. It's fun to have you. I just love these little guys. Um, first off, your first book was published in 1984. And since then, you've, you've written 27 books with Arthur and, and then uh, 25 years of Arthur on PBS, the, the series. So I think everybody's curious about how, I've heard the story, but how did the first story come, come to be? Well, it was actually 1976, uh, back in the Jurassic period. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it feels like now. Um, I, and my son asked me for a bedtime story. He was three years old. And together we figured out this underserved animal in the world pantheon of children's literature, aardvarks. And uh, the story was about his nose. And, you know, I, I just finished this book. I, I thought of it as maybe my last Arthur book, but I probably shouldn't say that. <clears throat> never say the last. You'll never, always never. <laughs> but, uh, you know, in this book, um, I, I got to write for, uh, as you were explaining in the wonderful introduction, uh, kids who grew up on my books are now parents who have kids who are discovering Arthur for the first time. So it was a, it was a very interesting project to work on. I loved it. Um, <clears throat> there he is. There's Arthur. <laughs> and Francine, in that last book that was published in 1976, I, I went back and reread it while I was working on Believe in Yourself. And the last line in the book says, there's a lot more to Arthur than his nose. And little did I know <laughs> that, how true that would become. <laughs> yes, all these years later, over four decades of Arthur. First off, uh, how did you come up with the name Arthur Reed? Well, I think it, uh, it was a bedtime story. I was tired. I was worried. I had just lost my job. <laughs> and uh, and I, I was looking for alliteration, I guess. And that's where Arthur came from. Arthur Aardvark, yes. <laughs> now, he's one of the few mm -hmm. cartoon characters that I know of that does have glasses. Yeah. What was the reasoning behind that? Well, in the first book, he did not have glasses. Mm. But in the second book, <clears throat> Excuse me. He uh, that w was something my son was going through, uh, getting glasses, and I thought, well, it could be helpful uh, to other kids, you know, to accept having to wear glasses. So that's where I, I think the best stuff happens in real life. So that's where I get all of my ideas. That's I remember my son <clears throat> when he came home with his new glasses. The first thing he said was, Dad, I thought all my friends were better looking. <laughs> <laughs> well, this little guy is a cutie. And his last name is Reed, R-E-A-D. Was that done as maybe an impetus to get kids to read? Because we're all trying to get our kids to read. They just, Absolutely. you know, edge out in front of a TV or something. But reading is something that is very important. So was yes. that not specifically or just happenstance? Yeah, it was specifically. And um, I, I guess when the television show began, the whole Arthur's world just grew exponentially with detail. And I was asked, well, what's his last name? And I said, well, let's use Reed because the concept of this show and our goal at the start was to get kids to want to read from uh, using animation and television, these two seductive forces in children's lives. 
but over the 25 years, we, we discovered we could deal with a lot of other subjects too that would be helpful to kids. Now, in the past interviews that I've heard you on, um, you said you wanted the, the show and the, and the books to talk about truth and what kids are experiencing in their own lives. That's right. It's important. Uh, and, you know, I think the media today um, isn't as good as it could be about delivering truth to all of us. But kids especially need to be told the truth. And, uh, you know, they are like little houses that are being constructed and their foundations need to be solid and strong because upon which they build their house and their life. And if they don't have a strong foundation based on truth, things get pretty shaky. Right, definitely. Well, Arthur has been in third grade <laughs> for 25 years on PBS. And you he, wish you could be in third grade for that <laughs> long. 25 years, I don't think so. Uh, but he just graduated to the fourth grade. Yes, he did. And uh, this is the final season of the series on PBS. Yeah. And uh, they, uh, they said, uh, they, they're giving you a sneak peek at the end of what the characters' futures are going to be. Can you give us any hints? No. No? <laughs> You're sworn to secrecy, huh? I, all I can say is, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And it's going to be very satisfying for kids to see where these characters go off and how they grow up and what they choose to do with their lives. Because if you're not happy doing what you want to do as an adult, very sad situation. <laughs> so your son, you, 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 you admit, originally created the story for, as a bedtime story for your son. So he has, yeah. how, old, how old was he at the time, did you say? Three. Three, okay. So he has grown his whole life with this little fella as part of his household. Does he think of him as his brother, maybe? <laughs> it's like his worst nightmare, I think. <laughs> uh, oh, no. no, I don't think he, but you know, he became one of the producers on Arthur. He asked me one too many times, dad, do you need any help? Because he has a, a really strong background in television production and uh, film production. So uh, he kind of looks at the show in ways that I don't or can't. And we happen to be working on a new television series right now for preschoolers, younger kids. And I am just in awe of him, how he can direct camera shots and angles and things like that, that, you know, I kind of know what I want, but he can define what it is we're looking for there. Uh, so we're having a lot of fun with a new project, but we're getting off topic here. <laughs> <laughs> no, that no, that's fine. It, it's interesting when children pick up basically the same uh, as as their parents, and they just actually em not emphasize, but go a little bit farther, take it, and then go another step farther. Yeah. It sounds like that's what's happening in your family. Yes, they should. <laughs> um, how many Emmys did your show win? Did you win? Was I have I have seven and three, so I have I, I've done some research and. Seven of how many? Seven episodes? or eight sounds about right. I haven't Three. counted them. I keep I keep mine in a, a closet with my tax returns. Oh no! You need to show them. I mean, come on! You I have know, once in a while I take them out and dust them off. And when people come into my studio, they get very impressed. I, my little nephews visited last summer, and they were out in my studio, and they just were fascinated by them. I have this great picture of them like trying to steal them and oh, no. call it the Emmy thieves. <laughs> well, I asked this to the cast last week in the, in the press conference, if they had decorated their house or had little Arthur characters or figurines or pictures around their house. It doesn't look like from looking at you right now that you've done that to your house. I know a lot of people that work in Disney, they have their offices all bedecked with Disney characters. Yeah. What about you? No, you can see here, uh, uh, I'm in our little library in New York City, and um, out that way, 
behind the house, there's a tiny garden. And at the back of the garden was a garden shed. It's about six feet deep, about 15 feet wide. And that's where I work here. So uh, I have to be very uh, careful about, you know, uh, how I set up my space. And I kind of make a plan when I'm working on a book. Like I just finished a illustrating a book from my buddy R.L. Stein, who wrote the Goosebumps books. And uh, we this is our third picture book that we've done together. And I was working with the medium of collage. So it, for, it's really messy because I'm painting the papers, I'm cutting them and building these characters and backgrounds. It, it's very time consuming. So uh, I have to be careful. I don't have a whole lot of space. So I have to, you know, be prudent about how I use that space. But on Martha's Vineyard, where we are during the warm months of the year, I have an old sheep barn. The house was built in 1730. And I have a lot of space in, in the upstairs of that barn. So uh, I, I did most of the book there, but I had to finish it here in New York and be careful about how I did that. <laughs> But, but in my studios, I have lots of Arthur stuff. You know, right. I, I, I have the artwork and, you know, covers of variety. These appeared on in different magazines and things like that. Well, that's good. I, if, if it were me, I would, I would do my whole house with it, you know, because you have a lot to be proud of. I mean, Arthur has lasted all these years and he's been an inspiration, literally an inspiration to generations of kids. Uh, I do want to ask you about my namesake, Francine. I know. <laughs> Isn't she cute? <laughs> How did you come up with that name? Because that's rare. I've seen it maybe three times in my life on television and usually not very nice. I collect names. And when I come up with new characters, I go through my name drawer and match the character with, with a name. I love the name Francine. And I've only met maybe three uh, over the course of doing interviews with Arthur. <laughs> You're number three. Oh, okay. uh, but it, Francine is based on a real person, my sister Bonnie, oh. who was a wonderful kindergarten teacher for many years, uh, Harvard educated and uh, is a reading specialist. And um, she was really good at uh, sports, better than I was. And uh, like to talk a lot, a little bit bossy. And so all of those elements went into Francine and I, kids love her. I get uh, letters from kids wanting her phone number. <laughs> yes, can I speak with Francine, please? <laughs> well, let's go through a couple of the characters because I know they're all popular. So let me see. We have over here, um, help me with her name. Muffy, Muffy. Muffy. How did you, uh, what, let's give us a little bit of her characteristics. Bonnie's, uh, my sister, Francine, mm -hmm. was good friends with a little girl named Muffy. Oh. And uh, she was a sweet kid, uh, just a little bit kind of pompous. And uh, <laughs> I, I combined her with a friend of mine, Thomas, whose father owned a Cadillac dealership in town. And every day we would be walking to school and he would be driven to school in a new Cadillac and he would kind of do the royal wave. As he oh, man. <laughs> well, she's, she's a cutie and next to her is obviously Francine. Buster and came from my best friend, Terry Johnson, who now lives in Australia. Uh, he was very funny. I, 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 he just made me laugh all the time. And he was in my third grade class, as was the brain, the next one over. Mm -hmm. uh, he was uh, my friend, Alan, who was really, really smart, had like a photographic memory. And so that's where I based him. And Binky over there on the far right <laughs> was based on uh, uh, Clarence, who was also in my third grade class and a pain in the neck. I mean, he would pick on us at recess and kind of a bully, but yeah, he kind of looks like, but he looks like he's fun too. Oh, and, and with television, we got to kind of broaden his character and his personality 
and make him more dimensional. You know, <laughs> find out that he liked to dance and play an instrument and all these other facets of his personality. Well, they are all fun, but it sounds to me like you just take people that you know and combine them into the characters, which is what a lot of people do instead of just using their imaginations and, and creating something from, from scratch. So if people, I know we have viewers that are thinking, well, I have an idea for a children's story or another story. How would they start? Just, just write it down first? Um, yes, um, you know, first you have to find a compelling story. Um, I encourage people if they haven't read a lot of children's books to go to the library, go to bookstores and really, you know, educate yourself. There's, it's a wonderful renaissance right now with children's books. There's so many talented people working. Keep a sketchbook or a diary. Uh, try to write or draw something in it every day. Um, I had a wonderful art professor who said, if you see something that you think is ugly, draw it. And I remember living in a place and out my window was this horrible telephone pole with all of these wires and transmitters and things. And one day I said, okay, I'm gonna draw this. And I, all of a sudden, the lines became these beautiful patterns that went into these structures. And it did become a lot more beautiful to me. So, uh, you know, that's one thing people can do. But unfortunately, the business of breaking into a publishing house has become more difficult over time. Mm -hmm. And now I encourage people, once you have that idea, uh, uh, you use, a, use an agent because they are the gatekeepers to the editors who you want to get to. Right. Well, let me also ask you, I mean, the show has been running for 25 years on PBS. Have you ever had them say, no, we don't want you to do this particular thing, or can you do more of this? Uh, well, the way we handle uh, how shows are selected, each year we have a writer's meeting and uh, all of us in the production department, uh, the key people come to the meeting with ideas and we pitch them to the group. And then the writers go off and they may have found a story idea that they feel a certain affinity with. I remember two words I threw out on the table, desk wars. And one of the writers wrote this wonderful story about the classroom and the desks and uh, wars that were happening in a third grade class. And another idea, what happens to all our socks in the house? Where do they go? And uh, one of the writers, Peter Hirsch, our head writer, thought of this idea of basing it on the stock exchange and he changed it to the sock exchange. <laughs> oh, that's, that is so clever. That is very clever. Yeah. Uh, have you had a, an episode that really touches you more than anything, more than any of the others? Touches me? Oh, gosh. Uh, I, I, we've done, tackled so many subjects. I'm, I'm, what comes to mind right off the bat is that we did an episode with an autistic character, introduced it, and we got a, a letter from a dad who saw this show and realized through the show that he had an autistic child and was writing to thank us. And I think, wow, you know, the power of, that television has. Or, or we wanted to do an episode where Arthur's teacher, Mr. Ratburn, gets married. Mm -hmm. and we had an opportunity to have him marry a same-sex partner. And, you know, that's art should reflect life. And uh, it was great. The, the amount of positive feedback we got from that episode was really heartwarming. So there are so many subjects that we've tackled and, you know, there are things that aren't normally tackled on children's television programs. But what we always remember is that when you're reading a book with your child or watching a show, you are in control you have the power to share your values with your child. If there's something in that story that you don't like, your question, 
you have the ability to stop the story and say, you know, I think this about that. And this is why. So uh, I like to think that all the books and television shows that I've been a part of are conversation starters. And we look for ways to add adult humor in places so that we will draw the parents or the grandparents into these stories and want to share them with their kids. Yes, yeah, that's beautifully said. Yeah, because, you know, in the past, we didn't have the technology, we could stop anything and then continue, which is something that I know when Arthur first started, you couldn't, you just, you know, just yeah. watch the show and that was it. But we didn't have the woke culture back then and people are, are more yeah. in tune with everything in the world today. Um, so the most controversial, has that been the same-sex marriage, do you think? Um, probably. Um, and I don't know why it should be so controversial. Uh, but yeah, I, I have to credit PBS for having the courage to air it. And, you know, in a way that wasn't heavy, wasn't a big deal. It was just, yeah, the kids were happy that Mr. Ratburn was happy. And they were happy for him. Um, that's so. Uh, yeah, I guess you know that's one of the most controversial. Okay, so where do we go from here? The TV series is ending. Uh, what's oh, next? It's not ending. It well, was aired for many years, but we're not producing new programs. Not, new content is, but it, Arthur will still be around. I mean, we're not getting rid of this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. He's so cute. But um, so, so are you going to be, you said you you wrote another book, but you might still write more. Mm -hmm. And uh, are these guys going to be in content on streaming or anything like that? Are you going to? Well, you, you know, as you were saying earlier, when Arthur started, you just had to take the whole story in. You couldn't stop it. But wow, technology has just changed so much in 25 years. So now we have the ability to build a podcast mm -hmm. and, and deal with subject matter that way for kids. We have computer games that kids can play that are educational and fun. Uh, we have, we're going to be doing more public service announcements. We did one on voting for kids, uh, one on race, uh, talking about race with your kids. And Mrs. McGrady, the lunch lady, who is one of my favorite characters, explains that you know, racism is like a disease. If you don't nip it in the bud, it can get a lot worse. <laughs> And, uh, and you have to talk about it. Uh, so and one of the things I'd love to deal with is safety in our schools for kids. You know, I worry about kids every day. Uh, schools can be dangerous now. And I, I'd like to see what we could do for kids um, in that area. That's great, that's great. Well, we just have a, a minute or two left, but can okay. you be a- Hit me with your best shot. <laughs> <laughs> What's ahead for Francine? I want to know what her future holds. Uh, oh, I can't tell you. Or they would shoot me. Oh. <laughs> You'll have to tune in. Well, actually, the show's not going to air till after the... We're going to air in April, so can you... You still can't. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> well, okay, Francine. Don't just be happy. happy. She's happy? She's strong. She's assertive. She's a great female character, and... Uh, the world is going to be happy to have Francine in it as an adult. <laughs> Way to go. Way to go, Francine. Okay. Um, and before we finish, um, let me just make sure that people know, 25 years, 25 years on PBS. This has been an amazing run. So, I mean, it has covered like two, two and a half generations. We've grown up with him yeah. and everybody else. Uh, any... The longest running animated children's show in history now. That's... I mean, I thought two years if I was lucky. <laughs> That's, yeah, you had no idea this was going to be so popular. I know Charles Schultz has his muse has the, a museum with everything having to do with peanuts. Is there any plans? Are, do you have any plans possibly to do something for Arthur? Um, there are no plans now, but you, you know, I think about it. 
<laughs> I've saved so many things, you know, I could have a little museum, I think. I think you should definitely think about it. The it would be a great... Pardon me? The Smithsonian uh, Museum in Washington has approached me about uh, bringing things there. So uh, that's a great honor. So that's what I'm thinking about right now. That would be a good place for Arthur and his friends to hole up for a while. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Well, um, let's say goodbye to these little guys for the time being. And I appreciate your coming on, uh, enlightening us about who Arthur is, how he got his start, and who everybody else is, and what's ahead, which we didn't get very much information on. <laughs> we'll have to watch it. You, you, you gave it a valiant effort, Francine. I did. I did. I really did. But um, OK, so <laughs> we will watch. and We'll get the information about what is in store for Arthur, Francine, and the rest of the gang. And in the okay. meantime, I want to thank Mark Brown for joining us and enlightening us about the whole Arthur world. And uh, for those viewers who uh, are thinking that maybe they wanna write a book, you know, there's your inspiration. If you get the right characters and the right story, I think you've got most of it done. <laughs> but then there's getting the, getting the publisher, that's the hard part. <laughs> okay, thank you, Mark, I appreciate it. And we will thank see- you, Francine. Okay, we'll it's see you fun. next time when we take another look beyond the red carpet. Again, I want to thank Mark Brown for joining us and enlightening us about the Arthur universe. Arthur has been part of us for three generations and he's going to continue. All the kids behind me are going to continue to be part of American culture. So again, thanks to Mark and we will see you next time when we take another look beyond the red carpet. With over 30 years of experience in real estate in the mortgage industry, Darlene Mays provides knowledge and expert guidance to clients looking to buy or sell a home. Serving clients throughout South Orange County, Darlene specializes in the senior community of Laguna Woods Village. Darlene works with her clients to ensure the highest level of service, from the beginning of the process right down to the closing table. If you are looking to buy or sell, who you work with really does matter. Call Darlene Mays today.